I have the pr privilege of introducing a close personal friend whose daughter is actually here with us today. Where's Tori at? Tori is in the way back, who we know from, who goes to the University of Oregon and from Colorado. Our next speaker's story is really a story of the American dream. As a single mom in the year 2000, Heidi Ganahl launched Camp Bow Wow, investing the last of her savings into a risky new business idea. Now with over 200 franchises, Camp Bow Wow is one of the largest and fastest growing brands in the pet industry and one of the largest pet care companies in the entire world. Heidi was recently featured as one of the 10 most promising entrepreneurs in Fortune magazine. She led Camp Bow Wow to make the Inc. 5000 list five years in a row and was named Denver Business Journal's Colorado Businesswoman of the Year. Give her a shout for that. <laughs> Heidi knows the challenges of hard work and overcoming adversity. She believes quality, affordable education is a key to success for our children, our economy, and our future. Last year, she launched the nonprofit Moms Fight Back to give Colorado moms a voice in how to make Colorado a great state again for children. Additionally, she serves on, the, uh, on several nonprofit boards focused on education, entrepreneurship, school safety, and that includes the director of the University of Colorado Foundation. As a proud CU graduate, Heidi is also inspired to serve, uh, is also inspired to, to run and to serve as CU's regent. Please join me in welcoming Heidi Ganahl. <laughs> That is perfect. I love that song even still after all these years. So you guys, I love being at conferences with young people and watching the tweets fly and the Snapchats flow. And my daughter Tori is probably getting a kick out of me being at this conference and trying to keep up with all that technology because I'm good at dogs, I'm good at small business, but I'm not good at social media. <laughs> I'm kind of klutzy that way. It's a bit like Hillary Clinton trying to appeal to young voters. <laughs> She's like an old relative who's new to Facebook. <laughs> Dear America, did you get my poke? Is it appearing on your wall? I'm not sure I'm using this right. Love, Aunt Hillary. <laughs> but I do love all this new technology, though. And capitalism, free markets, entrepreneurship, it's brought us things like our iPhone, Snapchat, Stitch Fix. It's also helped me create a new way to care for dogs in this country 16 years ago. The story of Camp Bow Wow actually starts back in Colorado on a day in May in 1994, probably before some of you guys were born. Early that morning, my husband, Brian, who was very entrepreneurial, a great guy, just adored him, jumped from bed, giving me a quick kiss and a love you, babe, as he headed out the door for a 25th birthday surprise from my parents. A couple weeks prior, my dad had run into an old family friend, Cliff, who was a United Airlines pilot for 30 years. My dad came home so excited about Cliff's new hobby, which was flying in air shows with an old 43 Stearman, like the open cockpit biplane, like a Snoopy Red Baron plane. We all thought it was the perfect birthday surprise for my young daredevil husband. The plane had done all the stunts and Cliff had radioed to my parents so that they could do a flyby so they could take pictures. Instead, the plane crashed into the ground and both of them were killed instantly. Well, I was devastated and I laid for bed in day, for days, weeks, months, and, and uh, the thing that got me out of bed were my two fluffy friends, Mick and Winnie, my two rescue dogs. They would give me a quick woof to remind me that we needed to play ball, that life had not stopped. That fall after the crash, I got a million dollar settlement from the plane's insurance company. But the money felt terrible. I didn't want the money, I wanted buy-in back. I wanted our life back. It did, however, give me some space and time to heal and also to blow the million dollars. I loaned money to family and friends. I hired a terrible money manager who was recommended by all the best people. And I started a business that didn't work, a catalog company. A business people said was sensible instead of the idea that Brian and I had dreamed up a few months before he died, a camp where dogs could hang out for the day. 
They all said doggy daycare sounded absurd. Now you guys have grown up with doggy daycare, so I know you know that's not true, but this was back before anyone knew what doggy daycare was. What was absurd was that I had blown through the million dollars in just six years. I was now a single mom, back in pharmaceutical sales, and down to about $83,000 in a retirement account. My little brother Patrick knew I was struggling. He suggested we dust off the old Camp Bow Wow business plan and see if we couldn't make it happen. It didn't seem so absurd now that I'd done what was sensible and had gotten absolutely nowhere. I wanted to make that million dollars back on my own merit. I wanted to see our dream of Camp Bow Wow come true. But most of all, I wanted to create the happiest place on earth for dogs. So that's what we did, and the dogs started coming. We launched in an old building south of Denver. Our first big media coverage was the Rocky Mountain News. They came to do an article on us. I showed up for the interview a bit late in time to my, hear my brother, my little brother, in the play yards yelling at the dogs, hey, no humping allowed. <laughs> I was horrified, but the reporter laughed, and that was the title of our first big press, our article, No Humping Allowed at Camp Bow Wow. <laughs> Well, the next year we opened a second Camp Bow Wow, and we started getting calls from folks all over the country asking how they too could open a camp for dogs. Hmm, well, I maxed out every credit card I had and went to file the registrations, and off we went franchising Camp Bow Wow. A year or so later, magic happened when America Online named us the next great franchise on their homepage. Everyone used AOL back then. I don't know if you guys remember the, you've got mail, and the dial-up. It was terrible. We got a couple thousand franchise sales leads from that one day alone. Over the next year, we sold over 100 franchises. I hired my family, my friends, my neighbors, the guy driving by in the street. We opened camps like crazy all over North America. The fur was flying. <laughs> but then, in 2008, all heck broke loose when the stock market crashed. The downturn almost destroyed Camp Bow Wow, along with the whole franchise industry, as no one could get loans to start a business. Well, we dug in, we fought back. I had to let it go of a bunch of employees, including dear family and friends. We pulled out every stop as the recession dragged on, and God love pet lovers. They kept spending money on their dogs, and we survived. <laughs> As I dug in and kept Camp Bow Wow going, I kept my nose to the grindstone, and I didn't pay much attention to things I thought I couldn't control, like regulation on businesses and the economy. That is, until there were too many things the government was doing to affect our business to ignore. I started to get really mad. It started early on with an unexpected visit from the local zoning officer right after I opened the first camp in Denver. He showed up and he's like, where's your conditional use permit? I'm like, I didn't know I was supposed to have one. He said, what are you doing here? I'm like, hanging out with dogs. He said, this is not okay, it's not in the books. I go, what do you mean? He said, there's no classification for this type of business. Come on down to the city. And he gruffly pushed through all the pages. We didn't have it online back then. And he's like, Ugh, all I can figure out is this is the warehousing of commodities and the commodities are pets. I was like, whatever. But then he slapped a max of 15 dogs on the facility. So we could only have 15 dogs at a time because he was worried about me hurting myself or the dogs hurting each other. Well, that did not bode so well for making payroll or making a lot of money at the camp, so we had to move into a place where we could do boarding and have more dogs. Then a few years later, the Colorado Department of Agriculture, just a bureau, it's not anyone elected, decided that we needed to have the same ratios as children's child care, like child care facilities, at our dog care facilities. So instead of having one person for every 25 dogs in the yards, we had to have one per 15. Well, that reduced the profitability at our Camp Bow Wow's in Colorado by about 15%, just because some regulator decided that they knew how to care for dogs better than we did. This ended up costing our franchisees in Colorado over half a million dollars a year and still does today. They slapped this rule on us without any discussion, no data to back up their reasoning, no one as much asked for our opinion, even though we were the biggest player in the industry and caring for millions of dogs a year. Guys, the regulations we face every day growing businesses are ridiculous, and they are expensive, and they cost all of you the ability to get a job at our companies. We don't have enough money to put back in to hiring more people because we're so busy chasing our tails, no pun intended, following all these regulations. As a friend just wrote a book about, the government ruins just about everything, and it almost ruined Camp Bow Wow at many turns. 
So I'm on a mission now, and that's part of the reason I'm speaking to you today, to keep the American dream alive for all of you, so you can have the same opportunity I did to unleash your own American dream. I want to teach everyone about the beauty of free markets. I'm here to shout from the rooftops that socialism does indeed suck. <laughs> yes. And business, entrepreneurship, free markets do indeed rock. <laughs> So I'm going to give you a few tidbits to defend capitalism. Just 200 years ago, 85% of the world's population lived in extreme poverty. That number is now only 16%. In 200 years, life expectancy has increased to 68 years from its long historical average of 30 years. In 200 years, from a world of almost complete illiteracy, 84% of adults can now read. What happened in the last 200 years? Anybody? America happened. <laughs> Capitalism happened. It has been at the root of nearly all significant technological, medical, educational, and societal improvements. Capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than any other force in history. And it is done through by voluntary exchange. No one is forcing anyone to do anything. So what does it mean to lift people out of poverty? It means mouths being fed. It means girls going to school all around the world. It means ending slavery. It means eliminating hunger. Hunger could be virtually eliminated in the 21st century. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, doing well is the result of doing good. That's what capitalism is all about. And guess what? We don't need to regulate good business. The beauty is that consumers can vote with their dollar. <laughs> If you don't like a company's moral compass, or if you're a liberal, a socialist, or a Bernie fan, and you don't like a company, then don't spend your money there. If you don't, li <laughs> if you don't like how a company does business or pollutes the sky, then you don't have to buy their product. You don't have to drive their cars. So stop with the regulation and start encouraging more people to vote with their dollar. That's the beauty of free markets. But y'all, we really don't have free markets in the good old United States of America at this point. We are shackled by regulation after regulation. It's akin to telling Michael Phelps to go win a gold medal, but putting heavy weights around his ankles. Growing up in America is a tremendous gift. It's through the blessing of being born here and growing up with a family that instilled in me a belief that I could do whatever I set my mind to that I was able to build Camp Bow Wow. But for the first time in the history of America, Children are born today worse off than two, not just one, but two generations ago. And you are rapidly losing your freedoms, your individual rights in your country. Asked about the American dream, half of America believes it's dying or dead. And then there's the blame game. To wrap this up, I want to say it is not the fault of business. We are not the bad guys. You see the news every day. I am the bad guy, you guys. I am the entrepreneur, the capitalist, creating jobs and growing businesses, just like all the other business leaders you've heard and met and talked to here. We have to stop apologizing for creating businesses, for growing jobs and wealth, and we have to show how proud we are of it. I've loved every minute of being an entrepreneur and building business and creating thousands of jobs and caring for millions of our furry friends. And in the process, we were able to start a foundation and rescue over 10,000 dogs that needed homes. Just like solving poverty, we can solve all kinds of problems with free markets and your beautiful minds, putting it, applying it to starting a business. So I want to encourage all of you, just once in your life, go out and start some little business. Try out being an entrepreneur. It's awesome, you guys. It's awesome. Socialism does suck, and capitalism does rock. <laughs> Don't you dare let anyone tell you any different. I am the living proof of all that you can do, all our country can do, and all that you are fighting for. Go out and unleash your own American dream, and keep fighting for that American dream. God bless America. Guys, I'm not sure if we have time for any questions. We do have time for okay. just a few questions. All right. So ladies, go ahead and raise your hands. OK, so we all agree taxation really sucks. It's, it's theft. It really is. Um, as a small business, I'm not personally a small business owner. My family owns a gun store in Oklahoma. Um, 
Last year, we paid over $150,000 in taxes on our business. Google didn't pay a single cent. And I find that that's really wrong that someone starting a small business can be taxed so much when someone bringing in billions and billions of dollars is taxed nothing. What is your response to that? Well, we call that not capitalism, we call it crony capitalism. <laughs> Yeah, and yes, you're absolutely right. We are killing small business in this country with taxes and regulation. And there are lots of different ways we can solve for that. It's so simple if we really put our minds to it and put good people to it. So I think the issue is not, is capital, like should big companies be taxed more than less? I actually believe in a consumption tax so that anyone who buys anything, yeah, I mean, get rid of all the other taxes. And when you buy something, you pay a tax and then it'll all e even itself out. But that's too simple, right? Too easy. <laughs> so yes, it is a big issue. And the reason is big businesses have teams of lawyers and accountants and accounting firms that can figure out all the ways around paying taxes. But don't believe everything you read, you guys, either. I think um, this general idea that co big corporations don't pay taxes is not always accurate. Um, they pay other taxes in a lot of different ways. I'm not saying every business person is a good business person or every corporation is a good corporation. Again, vote with your dollar. So if you don't like what's happening with a corporation, then vote with your dollar and don't use the product. And then this is going to be our last question. Okay. I'm so sorry. Hello, uh, my name is Micah and I'm from Sevierville, Tennessee. Um, yeah. Um, as a young woman also in animal agriculture, how do you explain to people who don't understand animal agriculture that, um, I guess, laws and regulations set by the USDA and local agricultural departments are actually not helping protect what they think they are? No, it's terrible. I mean, if you look into that industry, the things that they're doing are actually hurting animals and making the situation worse which, like I said earlier, government ruins nearly everything. <laughs> so my, my take is always let the consumer decide what the best product is, which is starting to happen with the you know, farm fed and, and the cage free movement and some of that stuff. So if you're a firm believer in that, then go buy those products, even if they're a little more expensive and start telling the government who's in charge. It's the consumer, not the regulators. Thank you. Yeah. The party was and everybody have an apple. I tell the fellas starting in calling. And the girls respond to the call. I have a pool with shout out. Alright guys.